If you followed along in yesterday's exercise, then today's going to seem a little bit repetitive because the solution is going to be very similar, except it's going to have a little bit of a twist to it. I still recommend for you to go through it because being able to build the Fibonacci sequence and work with it off the top of your head is very good. One, from just a proper way to think about algorithms perspective, but also for things such as coding interview questions. So right here, what we want is to generate the Fibonacci sequence, but this time, instead of having the entire sequence, we simply want to find whatever the last value is. So I'm going to create a method here called nth Fibonacci, and it's going to take a number. Now this number is going to be the number of items in the Fibonacci sequence, and I'm going to build the same type of implementation that we built last time. So this is going to take the inject method, and inside of inject, we are going to have an array, and this array is going to start with the integers 0 and 1, and then from there, I'm going to pass that a block. So we're going to pass inject a block. And from here, we're going to add to our array with the sum of the last two items. So this is the standard way to build a Fibonacci sequence generator. So I'm going to say fib.last2.inject and then pass in plus to inject and then in the block. And the only difference is gonna be this time, instead of having the entire sequence, which if you want to test this out, if I say nth Fibonacci pass in 10, this is gonna run and it's going to build the same sequence as before. But now what we want, as you can see from the test, is we simply wanna know what the last item is. So what I can do is right at the end of the block, I can just say dot last. And now if I run the code, this is going to give us exactly what we need. So instead of giving an array and returning an array back, this method simply returns the last item in the array. Now, if you're wondering why I did this, because this is a very similar implementation from building the sequence generator, it's because this is a very good practice and the more times you can do it, the better you're gonna get at it. This is something, and this is a pattern that you may need to follow on a number of times where you build a collection, much like we're building this array right here, and we need to add to it, but we need to add calculated values. So imagine having to build an array of invoice items, and as you're adding invoice items, you are collecting what each one of the values are. So if you have, say, line items on the invoice, you need to be able to see those one at a time, but you also need to be able to create a running total. And so that's the kind of thing that we can do right here. So this is a very important thing to have down. And also you may be coming to this and you may not have seen the last episode. So being able to see this and be able to grab the last Fibonacci value is something that I definitely wanted to walk through. So if I save this and now run RSpec February 19th and run this, all of our tests are passing. So this is how you can build a method that finds the nth Fibonacci value in Ruby.